What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another week of live racing here at Parks. It's out of the gate. Track announcer Chris Griffin joining you here in the Parks Racing Studio on a cool shirt Monday. Got to have a cool shirt on a Monday. Thanks to the ambassador of Juan for making sure I've got my cool shirt for today. I've got a special shirt for next week because we got some sort of holiday. Is it a holiday? I guess it's a it's sort of a holiday, right? Coming up next week as we're into the month February. We got a great show you for you today. The main thing we want to talk about too is that YouTube channel. Make sure you check it out at Parks Racing. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but let's dive right into this card here and start handicapping numbers one and two as we get into the first race at one mile. Maiden ten thousand dollar race in here. You're taking a look at this two turn event. For me, as you take a look at this field, the test hero, it seems like this is this horse is the top pick. One, two, and four for me. Five to two on the morning line. A three-year-old colt by Summerfront. Danny Velasquez. Uh, the equipment change, don't note that. The blinkers will not be on on the number one. So we'll talk about that change when we get to scratches and changes during the live show. But at one mile, it just seems like this horse with the speed that this horse had shown at Laurel should get the job done. Doesn't have the blinkers on. So we'll see how forwardly placed this three-year-old colt is. But it seems like today is the day that he gets the job done here at a short price, five to two in the opener. Race number two at a mile and 70 yards, taking a look at this 7,500 non-winners of three lifetime race. And Core Valley, I think I give you a big long shot in here. 15 to one on the morning line, Andy Hernandez. Throw out the last effort. This horse just backed up out of it against much tougher horses. Came out of a 7,500 non-two, won that race. Now back in with friends here at 7,500 non-three. This horse definitely fits. We'll see where this horse does end up early on. I think he could take him a long, long way in here, and it looks like he's going to be a price. Wonder City for me is a play against. I do have this horse in the second spot, but horses that just got the victory in the 7,500 non-winners at two, unless they win going away on a class drop, I usually play against these types, and I'm going to do so in here with that five-year-old mare. So let's see if Cor Bally at a big price, hot riding Andy Hernandez, who's right there at the top of the standings. We'll see if they get the job done there in race two. Hey, get the job done and hit that subscribe button on YouTube right now. We launched it today. Big shout out to the TV crew. Thanks again for helping getting that launched right here at Parks Racing. Happy to bring it to you. Now just hit that subscribe button. button. Even if your name is Jerry up there and you're still trying to learn how to use that phone and get on there and subscribe to that YouTube channel, hit that subscribe here all about YouTube right here at Parks Racing. with you here on out of the gate hit that subscribe button again check out all the great content we got more content coming up tomorrow we're going to have race replays you'll have trainer interviews you'll see parks fanatics plenty of great coverage right here at parks so hit that subscribe button check it out on YouTube that launched today. And again, happy to bring that to you. The better is that a lot of people are asking about YouTube. So we've got that channel up. Make sure you do your part and hit that subscribe button. Let's talk about race number five in Hollywood Jet. Nice to see this horse come back. Uh, this horse is gonna be a short price. Eight to five in the morning line is gonna be tough in here. Let's take a look at this horse's last effort. Look, he's got front end speed. When he clears off and he's alone up front, he is very tough to catch. This is a promising horse in here. When you take a look at Hollywood Jet, Luis Acasio getting back aboard, Carlos Millian, a four-year-old gelding, two wins at the distance. Uh, he was a top-notch sprinter here last year. Now he's a four-year-old. I think he can continue to progress. So this is one that you got to keep an eye on as you take a look at uh, some of these horses that run on the circuit right here at Parks. Could he make some noise uh, from a national standpoint? We'll see how he performs here today, but this is a really competitive field in race number five. I will be on Hollywood Jet. And we'll see if this emerging sprinter continues to just go up the ladder right here in today's fifth race. We got a chance to catch up with trainer Jordan Bullock. Recently passed away was trainer Donald White. Jordan Bullock worked with Donald White for eight years, and we got a chance to talk to him about some of his memories, that mentorship, and what trainer Donald White meant to him. So we wish Jordan Bullock all the success, and here's what he had to say about his mentor, their relationship, and the late Donald White. Uh, I met Don White about eight years ago. Um, I just kind of came onto the racetrack um, just looking for somebody to give me a chance to uh, start. I uh, met Don just uh, in passing, and uh, heard that, I said, Don, you know, I heard you got a spot and I'll be there tomorrow. And he was kind of taken by that and he was like, okay, fine, it's Sunday, but sure. So I showed up on a Sunday work and uh, I just flat out told him, hey, Don, I want to be a horse trainer. So I'm going to, you know, want to learn everything I can from you. And he made a joke and said, you know, you won't learn much. So uh, after that, you know, I ended up staying for about eight years and I mean, just doing every aspect. He was a very hard, he was almost like a football coach. Uh, where he was, and maybe I guess saw potential because he rode me very, very hard. 
um, and he expected a lot from me, um, sometimes more than the others, and I never understood why. But um, you know, it was very, it was very nice to have that kind of a support, almost like a father figure. Um, so over that time, you know, we we got, became very close. Um, we traveled to different racetracks, racing horses up and down the Mid Atlantic, and uh, just kind of developed a bond, you know, almost like a family member. And then, um, you know, towards the end, um, once he kind of, you know, got sick with the cancer and everything, um, he finally allowed me to kind of take more control. And um, he and I were really on the same page. Um, and he just, you know, told me like what he expected of me and to not to worry and that everything was going to be okay. So once he passed, which was, you know, very hard for me, um, I had just lost my father a year before to COVID. Um, you know, I just kind of had to pick up the pieces because of how he was and that military kind of push. Uh, I grieved shortly and just made sure that things would go the way he would handle them. Um, and I was very fortunate that over that time I was able to develop a relationship with the owners. So they were very comfortable leaving their horses with my care and continuing on, continuing on with me. And we've had a lot of success. And I have to really attribute that to Don's, you know, drive and um, level of expectation for me as why I've had the recent success I've had. Again, we do offer our condolences to the family and friends of trainer Donald White. Continued success and good luck to trainer Jordan Bullock. And we thank he and his team for joining us right here at Parks. Race number six, five and a half furlongs, $25,000 claiming race in here. When you take a look at this field, the number two and still alive. Another horse with speed, another horse with Andy Hernandez, another horse with some value. You get the weight break on a five-year-old mare that she goes against this company here at this distance where she's one for one. I think this is kind of a surprise package in here. Yes, there are some good horses in this race, but the number five Talia Ladybug is scratched. So the five is gonna be off of that selection uh, when you take a look at when we get full scratches and changes. Talia Ladybug has got speed. She's out of there now. It really makes the job, I shouldn't say easier, but it makes the path to victory easier for the two still alive who's got a lot of early speed. Race number seven at seven furlongs. You're taking a look at this event in here, and this is a real competitive field as you continue to see in the late sequences. The Philly Big Five also over $200,000 into that carryover jackpot. So look forward to that wager with a 50 cent minimum. It's a jackpot bet. The number nine towards the outside, Perfect Revenge. Talked in a few radio shows over the weekend. I like this horse. I think this horse is going to offer value at five to one. You go back to Ruben Silvera aboard here for Lou Linder Jr., a horse that has one win at the distance, but when you take a look at this last effort, the horse was way out of it and had a wide run through the stretch. If Ruben can save a little bit of ground, tuck in behind the speed, which there is plenty in this race this afternoon, I think Perfect Revenge is in a real nice spot to spring an upset. If you get the five to one, you get top connections here at some value with a double digit price. And again, to kick off your Philly Big Five, take a look at the nine. I think including that one on the ticket makes a lot of sense. The number three, Can't Stop This Man, is in pretty good form too. That horse is on the front end, I think would have more of a stalking trip, so one to keep an eye on is the three. Hey, we got more top trainers here on the backside of Parks, and we got a chance to catch up with Ed Coletti Jr. He's been a staple here uh, on the backside, and he comes from a racing family, and he's built up a nice relationship with Uptown Charlie Brown Stud LLC and Bob Hutt, who's been a guest on this show. Uh, they've had a nice journey as well right here at Parks, so we got a chance to catch up with Ed in his barn and got a chance to just talk to him about what it's like training right here at Parks. Here's Ed Coletti Jr. For trainer Ed Coletti Jr., horse racing has been a part of his family for decades. Yeah, my grandfather was an owner. He wound up training his own horses uh, and my dad went with him to the track every day and it's just been a family business ever since. With roots on the East Coast, Coletti traveled far and wide before stabling here at Parks. The Coletti family is a racing family. Yeah, most of it. We started in New England. Um, my dad ventured down to Florida a little bit when he, um, like in the late 80s, break babies at his own farm. And um, I stayed up this way when I went on the training. I was down the farm and then came back up. You know, just working at the barn every day, getting on horses, kind of learning what was, um, you know, the right way to do it. And um, I just, it just fell in the suit real easy, you know. I, uh, my cousin and um, he breaks all the babies for us. My stepmom's down in Ocala with the yearlings. You know, my dad's still in Gulfstream as a stall manager. I mean, we're, we've been in the business all our lives, so it's not going to change. For a trainer and his entire team, the dream is to win big races. Ed Coletti Jr. pursues that dream. I like the babies. Um, you get that new crop every year. You get that hope, you know, and you get to watch young horses develop. 
Um, I feel I do better at that than claiming horses and um, turn out the good three-year-olds. It's like everybody else, you know, obviously you want to ruin the triple crown and stuff, but um, locally goal, I would just love one time to win the PA Derby and maybe the Haskell give a shot, you know, just find that right horse. Coletti Jr. is the trainer for Uptown Charlie Brown Stud. He talked about the sire and his progeny who have raced here at Parks. That's, um, that's been a great, um, it's been a huge success for both Bob and I. I mean, we were uh, just one day sitting at the races and we said, we're gonna make Charlie a stud. And um, I said, well, we, <laughs> let's give it a shot. I mean, we've got nothing to lose. And it turned out really well for the both of us. And it's grown to a real nice breeding operation. I think, um, you know, I think they develop later on as two-year-olds, early three-year-olds, and it's, uh, and they seem to all be able to run. They might not run all at the same level, but they all have the heart and the determination to get the job done. Thanks again to trainer Ed Coletti Jr. and his entire team for letting us spend a few moments back there with him. Hear more about their barn, and I'm sure you'll see plenty of those uptown Charlie Browns on the sire line there right here in the winter circle at Parks Racing. Take a look at race number nine. Splice the main brace is gonna race against Parsimonian here, and I think they're both gonna take most of the action. We're gonna take a look at Splice the main brace's last effort. Smooth V is gonna be scratched out of there again. I'll have full scratches and changes coming up here very shortly, but you see this horse here. Splice the main brace, when he's alone up front, this is a horse that's earned over $340,000, and he's starting to get very good again here in the last few efforts. Abner Adorno is back aboard. This horse got in front and just would not be denied in this race. It was six to one that afternoon. Parsimony is going to take action. This is a horse that um, has been racing on the West Coast, has over $400,000 in earnings. Very game race horse. Kendra Carmouche will be aboard for the ride. Parsimony does like to look around at other, his competition a little bit. So I think if these two are nose and nose at the, at the wire, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm going to go with Splice the Main Brace, maybe to just get the early move on parsimony and get the job done there in race number nine but that's a real competitive field so look forward to that effort later on this afternoon race number 10 taking a look at race 10 on the card and the number 10 in here is going to be my top selection and that's going to be exit right when you're taking a look at exit right ruben silvera jr here jamie ness first off the claim we've seen this before exit right always makes that real punishing move into the far turn if he continues to make that big move he's gonna be very tough to handle in this spot exit right is just one of those horses that when you see his performances when he's on his A game, like he was last time at the $8,000 level, Ness claims the horse, now in a protected spot. When you take a look at that, that speaks volumes here for this horse, and you get your leading rider, Ruben Silvera, aboard. So outside draw, would like a little bit better post, but I think the 10 gets the job done, and we'll see if uh, you know that horse goes a bit of a short price, 7 to 2 in the morning line. Got to keep an eye on the board as far as that 10th race is concerned. Hey, our performance of the week, you know we always got one. It's our runaway winner right here at Parks, and we're going to take a look at a big winner from last week from the Linda Rice Barn in the performance of the week. This was Jovial. Jovial in that maiden breaking effort. This was a nice looking sun. Uh, you know, big purchase price comes over here to Parks. A little green down the lane was claimed out of this effort, but watch this dominating victory in here. And you see this horse just drawing away through the lane. Uh, was, was popular on the claim here because took a class drop and come from Kentucky out of those $30,000 races or a $30,000 race. Kind of looking around a little bit, but jovial. Maiden victory, our performance of the week last week right here at Parks. Don't forget you can follow all the great action at in the grandstand at Parks Racing all throughout the card, all throughout the meet. Make sure you comment. And of course, this show, along with other shows, race replays, interviews, all kinds of great coverage, Parks Fanatics, everything coming to you from this great TV crew right here at Parks Racing. We're putting it right up on that YouTube channel, but I call upon you the audience to make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you see my post at in the grandstand. Show me your cool shirts on a cool shirt Monday. Let's see if you got a cool shirt while you watch all this great live racing action. We got a carryover jackpot and the Philly Big Five over $200,000. It's all coming up right here at Parks Racing. Thanks again for joining us on another episode of Out of the Gate. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Good luck at Parks this afternoon.